All right, everyone, it's time for some Strixhaven spoilers. By the way, I'm Eric, and this is the Commander's Beacon. Let's talk about the new Orzhov Legendary Elder Dragon, Shadrix Silverquill. This is a 2-5 Legendary Elder Dragon that costs 3 white-black. It has flying and double strike. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may choose two of the following. Each mode must target a different player. Target player creates a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. Target player draws a card and loses one life. Target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. Now there's a lot going on with Shadrix, but the first thing I want to mention is that we all have access to card draw on a commander in Orzhov Colors. Yes, there was Fearja just a few months ago, but Shadrix gives us much more reliable access to card draw. With Shadrix, we can draw one extra card each turn, starting the turn we cast it. Uh, presuming we do so, of course, during our pre-combat main phase. Uh, getting extra cards from Fearja, by comparison, requires a lot more effort. Now let's talk about Shadrix's triggered ability. So at the beginning of combat, you can choose to have this triggered ability happen, or not to if you don't want it, but if you choose to do it, you have to pick exactly two modes, no more, no less. And since you have to choose a different player for each mode, that means you'll probably be the recipient of one of the modes, and you, one of your opponents will be the recipient of another. This is actually pretty cool because it lets you be political. You can trade ability triggers from Shadrix for favors from other players, but I want even more value. Sure, we can pick an opponent that doesn't have any creatures and give that opponent's creatures some plus one plus one counters. But that depends on an opponent not having creatures, which we can't really rely on. What I really want to do is build a deck where specifically the cards in my deck ensure that the thing that I give my opponent it doesn't benefit them. Or even better, hopefully it hurts them. And of course, whatever I pick for myself should have some synergistic benefit to me too. So let's discuss each of Shadrix's three modes from two perspectives. Uh, picking myself as the target player, and picking an opponent as the target player. But let's start with the first mode. A target player creates a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. So when would you want to target yourself with this mode? Well, you might have some flying synergies, uh, Safara Sky's Blade can be cast for only a single white mana if you have four other flyers. Of course, Shadrick flies and makes a flying token for you right away, so you're already halfway there. And then Safara gives all of your flyers indestructible. There's Steel Plume Marshal, which gives all of your other attacking flying creatures plus two plus two until end of turn whenever it attacks. There's Spirit of the Spires, which gives all of your other flyers plus zero plus one. I'm not sure how relevant that is, but it is technically synergy. As far as flying synergies are concerned, that's about it. You should probably be in Azorius colors, not Orzov, if you're building a Flying Matters deck. Now you could just play a regular tokens deck, and your commander will make one token creature per turn. And this isn't explosive by any means, but it is consistent, free, and reliable. Just pick any of your favorite token synergies. Divine Visitation, Anointed Procession, even little things like Intangible Virtue are useful here. And again, even though Shadrix doesn't just produce tons and tons of tokens, he does have three things going for him if you use him this way. Number one, he creates at least one creature token per turn really easily. Number two, his tokens are actually pretty good as far as tokens go, being 2-1 flyers. And number three, when you don't need more tokens, he can suddenly buff your entire team instead by giving them a plus one plus one counter each turn. So this is very cool. He can alternate between being a token producer and being an anthem. But why should you give your opponent a 2-1 flying creature token with Shadrix? Well, first you can nullify those creatures with things like Karavek the Spiteful, Dread of Night, uh, Engineered Plague. All of these permanents provide some form or another of giving creatures a static minus one minus one, so those inkling tokens will just die instantly. You can also use things like Pestilence and Pestilence Demon, which lets you pay a black mana to deal one damage to each creature and player. But those effects only nullify the creatures. What if we take it one step further to actually gain advantage by giving our opponent some creatures? When we kill those tokens, and we've got a Blood Artist, we can drain an opponent for one life, and we gain one life. There's also Dingus Staff, which deals two damage to a player when a creature they control dies. 
but we don't have to use silly jank like dingus staff we can just play massacre worm which gives all creatures your opponent's control minus two minus two until end of turn when it enters the battlefield and it also causes opponents to lose two life when one of their creatures dies if we give our opponents creature tokens and then kill them we can put plus one plus one counters on yeheni or plus one plus one counters on anything that's equipped with blade of the blood chief like our commander, for instance, uh, since Shadrix has double strike and some evasion, uh, growing it with Blade of the Blood Chief is actually pretty scary. We can give them tokens and kill those tokens to fuel Revelin Riches. We can gain life with Sangromancer. Uh, Toshiro Umezawa can even recast some of our instants from our graveyard if we really want to invest into this strategy. Those tokens that we give out don't need to die to give us value, though. We can use Trespasser's Curse, Bloodseeker, or Suture Priest for a small draining effect. Each of these cause your opponents to lose one life whenever a creature enters the battlefield under their control. I could easily see a Shadrix deck with very few creatures in it and using a lot of these creature hate and creature punishment cards. But let's talk about Shadrix's second mode. Target player draws a card and loses one life. So why should you pick this mode for yourself? Well, because drawing cards is awesome. Again, this is easy card draw on a commander in Orzhov Colors. You're not going to find this anywhere else. Uh, to be honest, this is probably the mode I would pick for myself most of the time, even if my deck had synergies with other modes. But why should you pick this mode for an opponent? Well, maybe you're playing Underworld Dreams. Just kidding. Don't let your opponents draw cards. Never pick this mode for an opponent unless their library is empty or the one damage will kill them. There's not much else to say here, drawing cards is really solid, and don't let your opponents do this. So let's talk about that last mode. Target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. So why should you pick this mode for yourself? Well, if you're picking this mode for yourself, you're probably playing a plus one plus one counters deck. Shadrix reliably gives you plus one plus one counters every single turn so you can benefit from effects like Animation Module, which helps you make more creature tokens if you're into that. Whenever a plus one plus one counter is put on a creature you control, you can pay one to make a one one servo artifact creature token. So this will trigger for each creature that you put a counter on with Shadrix's ability, and it just multiplies from there. If those servos stick around until your next turn, they'll get a plus one plus one counter from Shadrix, giving you even more triggers from your Animation Module. Uh, yes, this costs mana, but you can make a bunch of tokens this way. You can also use Outlast creatures like Abzan Battle Priest, which gives lifelink to each of your creatures that has a plus one plus one counter on it, or Merak Nightblade, which gives Death Touch to each of those creatures that has a plus one plus one counter on it. And yes, Shadrick plus Death Touch, since it has double strike, is very effective. And Elite Scale Guard makes your team almost impossible to block because whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it attacks, you get to tap target creature defending player controls. A note, however, that this won't work the first time you use Shadrix's ability to put plus one plus one counters on your creatures, though, uh, because if they didn't already have counters, then they'll have been declared as attackers before Shadrix put those counters on them. So the Elite Skill Guard's ability won't trigger. You can use Retribution of the Entrance as a decent removal if you've got a wide board, since the more creatures you have on the board, the more plus one plus one counters you'll get with Shadrix each turn. Now, this enchantment lets you pay a single black mana and remove X plus one plus one counters from among creatures you control to give target creature minus X minus X until end of turn. There's Skyclave Shadowcat, which is pretty good card draw, and it's on theme, but honestly it's less effective than something boring and well-known like Midnight Reaper. Uh, you can use Micaeus the Lunark to help give out even more plus one plus one counters, which is kind of silly. Uh, you can tap Micaeus and remove a plus one plus one counter from him to put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control, so Shadrix fuels Micaeus indefinitely. Of course, persist creatures will go great here, like uh, Puppeteer Click and... and Puppeteer Click. Okay, so there aren't too many useful persist creatures in Orzhov colors. You can also use things that turn those plus one plus one counters into value, like Crystal and Crawler, which can turn them into mana, or Etched Oracle, which can turn plus one plus one counters into card draw. That said, you're only getting one plus one plus one counter on each creature per turn. Now, these creatures would probably prefer that you go tall with those plus one plus one counters rather than wide. But why should you pick this mode for an opponent? 
Well, we can use Rattlesnake or Pillow Fort effects like Dread, Mazevith, Ghostly Prison to deter our opponents from attacking us, and then those plus one plus one counters just help our opponents kill each other. We can also use deterrents like Marchessa's Decree or Revenge of Ravens, which say you know, whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life. Well, these are fine deterrents for a little while, but if you put too many plus one plus one uh, counters on your opponent's creatures, they'll start to be really big, and then that loss of one life per attacker won't stop them from you know attacking you for 50 damage or something. But we can also go one step further. After we make our opponent's creatures bigger, we can encourage them or force them to attack elsewhere with things like Vow of Torment, Martial Impetus, and Bloodthirsty Blade. Uh, the Vow series of auras uh, prevent the enchanted creature from attacking you or a planeswalker you control, and the Impetus series of auras actually goads the enchanted creature, so not only can't it attack you, it's also forced to attack someone else, if able. And Bloodthirsty Blade does the same. It's an equipment, and it goads the equipped creature, and you can equip it to an opponent's creature. Of course, you could just play stuff like Solemnity, which prevents counters from being put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. Uh, be aware that this will also, of course, prevent you from using Shadrix's third mode to put counters on your own creatures, too. Anyways, that is Shadrix Silver Quill. I think this is a pretty cool commander. It's fairly subtle. It shouldn't attract too much removal from your opponents, unless maybe you start throwing out too many plus one plus one counters on all of your creatures with it. And you can build Shadrix in a ton of different ways. I'm most excited to find out how to take its downside, that is picking one of those modes and giving it to an opponent, and instead getting some benefit from it. So I'll have more spoilers to come from Strixhaven in the near future, I'll be discussing some interesting legendary creatures as a first look, just like this one. I haven't decided specifically which ones we'll go with for now, but we've only gotten two days worth of spoilers so far. But anyways, that's all I've got for now. Thank you for watching.